Hey, I'm Hunter from Scothrive, and in this video, we'll create this infinite looping CSS marquee with category tags. This tutorial is part of a code challenge on Scothrive. Code challenges include all the design files and assets you need to put your coding skills to the test and build real world projects you'll be happy to include in your portfolio. You can also submit your code solutions and explore solutions from other members to learn how they tackle technical challenges. To learn more, check out scothrive.com or visit the link in the description. I'll be using CodePen to complete this tutorial and most of the default settings should be fine. However, I did apply a CSS reset from the settings menu, so be sure to do the same if you want to reset your browser's default styles. To save time, I uploaded all the icons for this tutorial to CodePen so I could quickly link to them later. You can find additional free icons linked in the video description. With that out of the way, let's start with the HTML. First, create a container with a class container. Inside this container, create a heading to tag with a class title and add the content. Now create a new container with the class marquee wrapper. Inside this container, create another container with the class marquee. Next, create one more container inside this one with the class marquee group. This container is where you'll add the category tags. To create the tag, create an anchor tag with the class marquee tag wrapper. Although the href is empty, this would ultimately link to the corresponding page for the category on a live site. Next, create a container with the class of marquee tag container. Inside this container, create an image tag and a span tag. The image tag will link to the associated icon, which I've already uploaded earlier to CodePen. To get the URL, I can head to Assets in CodePen, copy the image's URL, and paste it into the source attribute. I'll add a height, width, and all attribute describing the image. For the span tag, I'll add a class of marquee tag and write the corresponding tag name. Now I'll repeat the process for the remaining 10 tags. To save time, I'll jump forward in the video where that's complete. There's still some more HTML that we'll write later in the video, but for now, let's go into our CSS and come back to that later. First, I'll grab the Montserrat font from Google and import it at the top of our CSS. Below the import, I'll add all the CSS variables for this project. On the body tag, I'll define our font family with fallbacks. Now we can style the container, which will use CSS Grid. To center the content, set Align Content to Center. Set Overflow to Hidden to hide the tags overflowing outside the container. Set the width to 100% and ensure the container takes up the entire height by setting Min Height to 100 View Height. Last, set the background color to the Grade 900 CSS variable. Now let's style the title class. To start, define the font size, line height, and weight. Next, set the color to the Grade 50 variable. Add a bottom margin and center the text by setting the text align to center. Next, style the marquee wrapper class by setting the margin to auto and max width to 100 view width, which will ensure the container never extends beyond the width of the current screen width. For the marquee class, set display to flex and gap to the gap variable. The next item to style is the marquee group class. Because this class is nested inside another flex container, we'll set flex shrink to zero, ensuring that the marquee group does not shrink to fit the parent. This class will also use Flexbox, so set display to flex and align the item to the center of the cross axis by setting align items to center. Next, set justify content to space around, which adds equal space between each tag to fill the available space. Then set gap to the gap variable and min width to 100%. Now let's style the marquee tag wrapper by first removing the underline by setting the text decoration to none. Then set the color, font size, line height, and font weight. Add padding, set the background color, and round the corners by setting the border radius. Last, we'll style the hover state for the wrapper by changing the background color to the gray 800 variable. The next item to style is the marquee tag container class. To start, set the display to flex and center the items on the cross axis by setting the align items to center. Let's style the icon by targeting the marquee tag icon class and setting the padding, background color, and border radius. Last, space the tag text from the icon by adding a margin left. Now that our design structure is complete, it's time to create the animation. To do this, we'll use the at rule to create animation keyframes. The syntax for this keyframe animation is simple. First, we'll give the animation a name. Then we'll define where the animation will start. We want the animation to transform on the X axis, so we'll set the transform X property to the scroll start variable. Next, we'll define where we want the animation to end. Again, the animating property is the transform X, which we'll set to the scroll end variable. 
Now that we defined the animation, we need to set the animation on the marquee group class. To do that, add the animation property and set the value to the animation's name. Set the duration variable, the animation timing function, and the animation iteration count. For those users that prefer reduced motion, we can disable the animation by using the prefers reduce motion media feature. Then we can target the marquee group and set the animation play state to paused. With the animation defined, you'll see the marquee group start to animate. As you can see, once the animation reaches the end, it restarts from the beginning. However, the seamless looping animation effect doesn't exist. So how do we fix that? The solution is to duplicate the marquee group below the current one, which will fill the space and make the loop effect we want. With that said, head back to the HTML, copy everything between the marquee group class and copy it below. The only thing we need to change in this group is to add an attribute called aria hidden and set it to true. This attribute will hide the duplicated categories for screen readers. Now you can see the animation loops seamlessly just like we wanted. Check out this video to learn how to create a responsive four column footer. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Again, I'm Hunter from Skillthrive and I'll see you in the next one.